Welcome to Botanical Biohacking. I'm Dr. Andrew Miles. I'm Dr. Chiu Xuelan. Today we have a really special episode for you. We're going to cover a product we ourselves use daily. It's very dear to our hearts, and it's also made us look pretty fabulous in the clinic. We're going to tell you about it, its history, and how you can make it yourself. Around 350 BC, a man was traveling in Hunan on business. He stopped to rest at a nice restaurant to get a drink, and he asks the innkeeper about a laundry service. He has some nice silk, he doesn't want just anybody washing it. He learns about a family who are experts at washing silk. They had a special lotion that protected their hands from arthritis and getting chapped in the cold water. It's silk, it's cold wash only. Hunan gets really cold in winter. You can almost feel the chill running through you as you try to will yourself to maintain grip as your hands lock up. So you can imagine the kind of arduous conditions these people are washing in, and yet they take pride in their work. They're not doing a quickie job. They're doing really quality work, enough to where they're getting a good reputation for washing for all of the best people in town. On top of the cold conditions, and damp weather, they're also using lye as a cleaning agent. Lye will eat through your skin quickly. However, thanks to an herbal lotion developed by their family with the help of an herbalist, they could maintain warmth and circulation in their hands in spite of their Spartan work environment. The traveler gets his clothes cleaned, and while he's there, he asks the family about their secret recipe. For the family, they don't want to tip their hand. This recipe is guarded as a family secret. It allows them to outwork all of the competition. Without this advantage, larger businesses could easily outcompete them and push them towards starvation. Remember, this is 300 years BC. It's not like they have social programs for the starving. The only social programs available are robbery and prostitution, and that's not where this family wants to go, you can imagine. The traveler understands their pressures. He considers their position and also considers those who also need this balm in order to survive. Finally, he offers them a hundred tails of gold. This is 1.6 million in today's US dollars. The family has a conference and determines that this is their big ticket into a more secure life, and they decide to teach him the recipe and processing methods. The traveler immediately goes to the court of Wu in eastern China. It's a region with many rivers, commerce, trade, fishing, and warfare all hinge on these river systems. It's a great market for the ointment. After some social jockeying, bribes, and name dropping, he finally gets an audience with the king. He wants to score a military contract for the ointment, for the river navy. The king hears him out and puts him in command of the forces and tells him to engage the Yue navy in the midwinter river battle. If he wins and his ointment is really that good, he gets a fiefdom worth billions in today's money when they conquer the neighboring city. Unfortunately, River battles of the time were complex and deadly affairs. We can get an idea for their complexity thanks to letters from the time between King Hu Lu of Wu and Wu Zixu. Even 200 years before at 514 BC, there are descriptions of, quote, boats designed according to their tactical positions. They had large wing ships said to correspond to heavy chariots, little wing ships corresponding to light chariots. They had giant ships called castle ships, which were like mobile assault towers. Bridge ships functioned like cavalry, advancing so tightly that no ship that was advancing against them could slip through the cracks. To make matters worse, the weather was so frigid to the bone, you know, just cold to the bone, kind of damp, that it made it difficult to manage the boats or even hold on to weapons for more than five minutes. The main method of artillery were still bows and arrows, and this requires very fine motor control. If you can't grip well, and if you're shaking in the cold, 
you're going to lose this motor control and you're going to miss your target. And this is a matter of literal life and death. The Yue Navy was a well-oiled war machine. Yet they soon discovered that the machinery, as well-oiled as it was, was still powered by people. And these people were at the mercy of the weather. As the traveler led the forces of Wu, the morale of the Yue Navy tanked. There was disease among the soldiers, and eventually the Yue Navy retreated. The King of Wu was able to extend his kingdom to the next river city, and with it, the traveler was able to gain a fiefdom. The people of Wu, from that time on, from fishermen to the soldiers, used the ointment to enjoy a better quality of life. This story is told by the philosopher Zhuangzi to explain the relativity of life and the relative value of things. The businessman and the silk washers were alike in that they both knew the formula for preventing chapped hands. One used it to gain a fief, the other simply to wash silk. It was in the use of the thing that the value differed. As we go through this episode, and in subsequent episodes, consider how you want to use this information. You may use it to improve your life, or you may use it to benefit a nation. The way you choose to use it is up to you. In the 1970s, researchers from the Dermatology Department of Chengdu University of Traditional Chinese Medicine decided to put a traditional botanical skin cream to the scientific test. In the 1970s in China, there was no free market like we know it today. So these researchers had no financial interest in the outcome. Remember that they were still working under a communist system, so they were getting paid the same low salary no matter what. What they did have was government money to do extensive testing on this skin cream in order to explore how it worked so they could better understand wound healing and the aging process from an academic point of view. What they discovered is that this skin cream made of Huangqi radix astralagus increases microcirculation to improve immune function in the skin and speed skin repair. So because of this, they started to look at the effects of the immune system on wound healing, which is something that has only come to light in the West in the last few years. They also found that it has an effect to regulate immunity to help the skin provide a sound defense. So it's important to remember that our skin isn't just there to look nice, it's there to protect our body. And it's one of the first lines of defense for our immune system to fight bacteria and viruses. And part of the way it does this is by providing this immune response. This immune response, unfortunately, can kick up a lot of free radicals. And they found that this cream can also help the cell by removing these free radicals because when you get too much, it can do DNA damage and it can also do damage to the local nerves. And this is simply from having too much inflammation as a byproduct of inflammation and general metabolism. So they found that Huangqi skin cream can improve the overall total antioxidant capacity of the skin. They found that it does this largely by increasing the activity of SOD, superoxide dismutase, which is one of our body's endogenous antioxidants. It goes further. They were able to discover that it increased ATP enzyme activity to make the skin able to transport water so it didn't sag or retain water as much. And as they looked into this, they found that water retention was a key inhibitor of wound healing. So if somebody is really overweight, they have edema, they're not going to heal as quickly if they're cut. So by looking into the activity of this skin cream, they're able to really dig deeper and find general principles of wound healing and skin care. So if you're trying to have beautiful skin, but you're also having water retention, it's important to address that water retention before there's even a possibility of having uh, the skin begin to tighten up and having that healing response. They found as well that this cream, this Huangqi cream, accelerated the healing of wounds and microabrasions by improving the physical and chemical status 
and osmotic pressure of the wound, and increasing the macrophages to aid in eating away dead tissue, and also to help restore healthy tissue. When it comes to restoring healthy tissue, they also found that it increased collagen formation to maintain firm, youthful skin. On top of all of this, they found that it promotes epidermal growth factor to help renew and regenerate the skin once the dead tissue has been taken away. So just to compare this, what you tend to see out there, the most expensive botanical mixtures of creams may do one of these. Generally, they'll say, oh, it has antioxidants. Well, cool, but there are no skincare products out there which have been scientifically demonstrated to have such a comprehensive healing effect on skin rejuvenation. They may increase collagen, or they may have an effect on superoxide dismutase, but even then, to what degree and at what dose. So this is just an incredible gold mine of skincare. This is a product that Lana and I really can't live without. We use it constantly. We found that it helps with wound healing and also it just helps to firm up the skin. And yet, in China, this is only known within the scientific community there. This is known to researchers and students. It really hasn't been marketed well. Just like the silk washers described by Zhuangzi, it's used by a very small group of people when its reach could really benefit a large area. It could benefit an entire nation. Like the silk washers mentioned earlier, this has incredible quality but poor reach. The quality is the biggest and most important issue here. When you look at most botanical skin care, you have very little idea of how much of the active ingredients are there or how much is required to make it effective. They may boast purity that it's organic, but who cares? You can easily say, oh, there's nothing toxic inside of it. Yeah, that's because there's nothing in it. That's just like homeopathy. It will never hurt you. Yeah, because it's holy water. So let's get real. If it's going to have an effect, it has to have a minimally effective dosage pharmaceutically. So let's look at the quality criteria. Generally speaking, for Radix astralagus, you want large pieces and you want to get the safety and quality checked with a private lab. The water content needs to be less than 10%. If your water content is at 20%, that's garbage. You also want to make sure that the cadmium is less than 0.3%. Some of the cheaper varieties won't have this testing. If they don't know, don't buy it. If there is pesticide residue from neighboring farms higher than 0.000002%, then it's not worth your while. Most crucially, the active ingredients need astralagoside for at least 0.04%. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's look at how we make it. First step is you soak radix astralagus for an hour. It will come in thin slices. If it doesn't come in thin slices, then you'll need to thin slice it. Soak it. Boil the liquid three times for an hour each time to extract the ingredients. Some ingredients will be easily water soluble. Some of them really need hard boiling at least three times. Then what you're going to do is combine all of these liquids. The cooking time affects the number of ingredients and the frequency of boiling will extract those lipid soluble ingredients that water alone won't decoct. So some of them will just right away, they'll absorb into the water, but when it comes to the fats, you really have to shake them loose with that boiling. After this is done, you add alcohol to further extract what the water alone can't get to. Then you let it sit. After a day of sitting, there should be sedimentation from the alcohol extraction process. Filter out this sedimentation. Then boil and reduce this liquid into a syrup and mix it with the carrier oil. I've used it off and on for the last 10 years. Lon uses it daily. Here's a little secret. When people have skin problems, when they have acne, when they generally have immune function problems, I give them this facial cream and it clears up everything. I have people come in and buy it by the box. Remember to keep telling your friends and rate us on iTunes or Stitcher. Next month, 
those of you who rate the podcast, take a screenshot of it and email it to us at botanicalbiohacking at gmail.com will be entered into a drawing. One of you will win this incredible facial cream so you can try it for yourself. I have a great friend in Alabama who's a plastic surgeon and he used to give this to each one of his patients after the surgery to help with the healing process. It's an incredible, incredible product. It's one we couldn't live without. If you want to grow it and make it yourself, we'll help you do this. If you want to help get it to everybody in the United States or Canada or wherever you happen to live, please take this idea and run with it. Like the silk washers, keeping it within our family, within our circle of friends, isn't enough. It really needs to benefit a nation. How you use this knowledge is up to you and ultimately in your hands. Thank you again for listening to Botanical Biohacking. Uh, We've done a little bit of market research. Apparently our demographics are people who, like you, are above average intelligence and remarkably sexually attractive. So kudos on that and keep up the good work.